about Steve. And I'm on the way up on my trip from Gulf Shores, Alabama to Montgomery, Alabama. And it's a beautiful, severe, clear day. No real weather to speak of, so it's an easy flight. And here I am leveled off at uh, 9,000 feet, straight and level. And just got up to 9,000, so you can see me leaning and getting the engine all set up like I want. And uh, this particular airplane is the uh, Corvallis TTX. It's an IO550 twin turbo charge. So uh, we run these engines at cruise at about uh, 31 inches of manifold and 24 inches of prop. And then we run them back to, once we uh, make altitude, we run them back to uh, around uh, 35 degrees Lena Peak, somewhere in that range. And uh, at that point, I'm burning um, about 15 and a half gallons an hour at uh, about 175 knots, uh, true. And uh, that's pretty good gas mileage in a big airplane like this. So uh, it's a very good performing airplane, very solid, good IFR platform. And it's got the great G2000 uh, Garmin panel in it. As you can see here, uh, multiple displays. There's two large 12 inch displays. And the primary display, which is in front of the pilot on the left side, can be split two thirds, one third. Two thirds is the primary flight displays. It includes your altitude, your airspeed, heading, and uh, all your primary instruments that you need. And then the uh, second third uh, can be anything you want. Um, there's a touch pad, which you can't see in the picture here, down in the console. And uh, there's a little joystick there, and you can push it back and forth. And um, over on the, what they call the MFD, which is on the right side, the multifunction display, it has all the engine instruments in the first strip and then uh, the, the rest of the screen's just divided in two. And there you can put weather or engine parameters or um, traffic, maps, charts, whatever you want. And um, it's quite a, quite a setup. Uh, up in the top part of the panel, you can see that we have the autopilot along with uh, all of the uh, backup push buttons that I need for radio and direction, plus the altitude set and vertical climb and descent and bar barometer and all those things. And they're very, very easy to, to get to. It's kind of like a jet panel. This is the new modern layout that puts everything right in touch and right in your sight. And way over on the left, you'll see a small uh, backup uh, flight instrument. And that's in case, for some reason, the two main displays go out. You have a battery backed up, backup display. Uh, at least let you keep the airplane straight and level and get it down on the ground somewhere. And then in the bottom, below the panels, you'll see one of the engine controls left to right, we have throttle, prop, and mixture, black, blue, and red, and then various other settings and controls. Touchpad took away a lot of the uh, panel need for panel switches. Uh, the air condition and heat and all the environmental control can be controlled by that. All the uh, frequencies for the radios and Gosh, a million other things, uh, flight plans, procedures, everything is there and can be punched up by the control panel. So um, we're straight and level, and in a minute we are uh, asking for the approach into Montgomery. See you then. Okay, I'm back with you. And uh, even though it's severe clear, 
I like to, uh, if the controller's not busy and if I'm not in a hurry, I like to ask for the approach. And in this case, the wind was out of the west. And uh, so I asked for the RNAV runway 27 approach, which is due west, into Montgomery. And um, they certainly gave it to me. And at this point, they usually you get vectors for these type of approaches. Um, they'll ask you sometimes if you want the full approach, which means you're going to fly by yourself and do all the procedure turns and all that. But most of the time, we'll just take vectors. That makes it easy on the controller and, and the pilot. And that would have been fine. But they threw me a little curveball on this one. They gave me direct to the Montgomery VOR, which is east of the airport. And um, told me once I crossed the VOR to head outbound, heading 100 degrees, which would be to the east. So basically, they're going to want me to pass over the VOR and then parallel the outbound uh, to the inbound course, which is fine. A um, little bit tricky on the flight plan setup because if they give me just vectors, then the, uh, and I've entered the procedure into the Garmin system here, the Garmin uh, G2000, then all I have to do is um, start turning the heading knob, which you see me doing here, every time they give me a vector. And I've got the, the flight plans in there. It's kind of a stick flight plan, and it, I just follow the line. Well, the autopilot follows the lines, and it's pretty easy. Now, when they gave me direct to the VOR and then go outbound, I had to punch up direct to the Montgomery VOR, which erases all of the uh, flight plan that's that's in the uh, system. So um, I had to wait till I crossed the VR and then punch the uh, procedure back in, which is not really that hard. You just select it off a list and it redraws the uh, inbound procedure. And at that point, you are getting vectors. So I crossed the VR, heading east on 100, and uh, at some point, they're going to give me a northbound turn and then intercept turn usually 30 degrees to the final and uh, the situation awareness with these type of displays is just incredible you know where you are all the time you can kind of uh, know what the controller is going to do and, and where which way he's going to turn you and that type of thing it makes it really easy but um, unfortunately I don't have the the audio <laughs> had a problem with my recorder so I'm just doing a voice overlay so kind of describe to you guys what's going on. But uh, I'm descending. Uh, I was at 9,000 feet when I started the approach, and of course they descend you on down. And I could tell he wanted me down pretty quick because uh, he kept me outbound away from the airport until I got down to the altitude he wanted me at. Then he turned me inbound. And, um, it's good to fly these practice approaches just to keep keep up on what buttons to push and what uh, power settings you need and that kind of thing so that when you're in the real uh, IFR weather then uh, it, it becomes kind of a mental remembrance of, of what to do it just keeps you sharper that way so I, I always ask for them if I have time and if they have time and as you can see right here, I'm making my turn. I believe I'm going inbound now. And um, it's always a nice feeling when you get lined up and you look up straight because I'm, I'm really not trying to look out the window too much. I'm trying to keep my head down in the instruments so that I can simulate an instrument approach. And um, it's always nice when you look up and there's the runway right in front of you is what happened in this case. A lot of times on the low IFR approaches, you don't see anything until you're practically on the runway. So you can see uh, now on the right side of the PFD, the plane is intercepting the uh, inbound course. And, uh, it's just about to intercept it. It'll give me one more turn here. The autopilot will. 
I punched the approach button just to be sure. It'll turn me inbound and capture. It's really an electronic approach. It doesn't really capture any radio beacons or anything. It's all done through GPS on these RNAV approaches, but they're just as accurate as the uh, ILS approaches, the instrument landing systems. So uh, we can go down to the same altitude, which is usually 200 feet above the runway and, uh, before we have to break off the approach if we don't see any part of the runway or any part of the approach lights. But um, here I am straight inbound. And at this point, I'll just be watching for the glide slope, which is an artificial glide slope, but it looks just like the same as if you were on the ILS. And uh, so uh, naturally, it's going to come in. And I went ahead and let the autopilot fly me all the way down the minimums. Uh, just uh, there again for the practice. And uh, it's an uneventful landing. so. I'll be quiet now and just kind of let you uh, see the rest of the landing and uh, see you on the next flight. Fun Pilot Steve, signing off.